happen and make contact. An aggressive move towards forcing Bottas towards the outside. Look at Carlos Sainz! He goes right around the outside of Pierre Gasly and he even tries to make a move on the Mercedes of Bottas. I really compromised Bottas coming out of the center. It's Turbo 51 over here! I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. And guys, I just realized I need to change my name back to Turbocharge 51 because SLR is no longer a thing. So guys, from next video you will hear back the usual like the channel started, Turbocharged 51. But we are not going to talk about that right now. If you enjoyed that very <laughs> very what's the word i'm looking for very useless piece of information drop a like down below on the video don't forget it it's only going to take you a nifty two seconds and let's get straight into it guys we are back in the my team career mode heading towards the penultimate round of the season heading towards interlagos for the brazilian grand prix in sao paulo now guys for this weekend obviously you guys know after the last uh, guys this entire season this season has been an absolute dream come true i don't care if we come last in literally these final two races i've got the opportunity to finish ahead of both of the red bulls actually well um hinting back to my second no my first season of f1 2019 driving for haas so um that um if you now look at the career mode aspect not my team but uh, it's the same type of situation and i'm not gonna lie that is something that i would like to achieve but if i don't i'm not gonna be sad because i'm in a back marker car and this season has gone phenomenally i mean if you haven't watched this season guys if this is your first episode here on zipper fox races make sure to go into my playlists hit the f1 2020 my team playlist and watch from the start because you will not believe the amount of success we've had this season it's been utterly, utterly insane. And I'm um, heading in towards this weekend for the, the Brazilian Grand Prix. Guys, I'm just going to enjoy myself. Whether I finish ahead of Verstappen or not, I'm honestly just going to enjoy myself as much as humanly possible. Now, unfortunately, we had our one major engine upgrade fail for the energy recovery system, the ERS, which we repurchased, which will definitely get come onto the car, I think, before Abu Dhabi. Then, obviously, the technical, the useless technical regulation reset. We are now going to purchase all the durability parts that we can um i think i purchased two yes and then by the end of the episode i will purchase the other two um as we head in towards this weekend now guys heading in towards this weekend as well you guys know after the previous round in mexico i officially made the decision that we are not going to rehire our current teammate jack aitken at the end of the season he has just it's just been disappointment of dis after disappointment after disappointment every single race weekend and guys i'm fed up he has had more than enough opportunity now to at least have one or two good races and he just hasn't so Aitken is out of the the equation and from um basically the end of next episode you guys are going to know who i've got I I in my eye but before we head there we've still got two races to go heading towards the performance chart for the penultimate round of our first season in my team mercedes are leading the way still with bwt racing points in p2 red bull racing p3 ferrari and p4 followed very closely by renault mclaren and Alpha Tauri. After Alpha Tauri, we've you've got us it uh, at it it turbo boosted racing for um, P8, P9 is Alpha Romeo, P10 is Haas, and P11 very far back from the rest of the grid. It is Williams. So guys, heading it towards this episode, the midfield battle is going to be insane. But basically, from Renault all the way down to us, it's going to be a very very intense battle for the points. Um, and Interlagos is it's historically been a track I don't run too well. At and already knowing the AI are strong around here, I've got a very, I wouldn't say a tough weekend, but I've got a weekend of work cut out for me if we want to get into the points, which will always stay the aim. But guys, before that, it's time to head to Quali. Let's head straight there and see where we can place on the grid.
jumping straight towards the end of our first run in Q1. And guys, while you guys watch the quali um, in, um, on your screen, I'm quickly going to explain something. Guys, unfortunately, for some other reason, my broken microphone on my main headset which i used to record these videos my mic was left on i do not know where or when it was turned on but because the mic is broken it makes like a <laughs> that type of noise the whole time so for, for some stages of this video i'm just reminding you guys the sound will is Jeff going to say something? No, he's not. The sound is going to be muted. Well, although it's going to be really soft so that actually my commentary voice over this is going to be a bit louder. I do apologize for that. It was a silly mistake from mine. I'm so used to it all being turned off constantly that I didn't check it. And after the race, when I looked at my recording footage, I'm like, why? Where's all this sound coming from? And I immediately clicked, ah, my microphone on my headset was turned on by someone. It wasn't me. Well, it, it must be me because I'm the only one that uses these things. But when and where the were turned on i do not know it was a silly mistake and i do apologize for some some sections of this video you guys are going to hear a bit of a but um i promise it won't happen again in in the near future now guys on to our final lap in q1 here around this beautiful racing facility called interlagos guys sao paulo is well interlagos why did i say sao paulo interlagos is a track that i really enjoy driving it's just it's hard to enjoy this race due to the ai being so strong around you they're not op but they are they are on the verge of getting op at the track i can remember in f1 2018 there, it was impossible to race the ai around this track on f1 2018 they would they were impossible to catch um well to to rival in a race or in quali but um it's the end of q1 open up drs we come towards the line and it's going to be p oh boy i can already see where this is going yep p20 not the best way to start off the weekend. Ah, great. Just freaking fantastic. And Jack Aiken is in P8? What? If he shows up at the final two races of the season, I'm going to be mad because it took him literally a whole season. Oh, okay, guys. Not the point. Not the best quality. But like I said, I don't care what happens in these final two rounds. It's been a dream season. So without further ado, let's head straight to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Let's talk about Parker. That was a great podium in the last race, so can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Leclerc, Daniel Ricciardo, and Vettel, Albon, Norris, Ocon, and Lewis Hamilton, Stroll, Aitken, Kimi Raikkonen, and Gasly, Perez, Parker, George Russell, and Antonio Giovinazzi. They've taken a grid penalty. Magnussen, Latifi, Kvyat, and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out Shit. on top today? As you guys heard me there at the end of the track preview, I just said shoo, which means I was quite surprised. A lot of penalties. So we are starting from P16, not P20. So a little bit of a bigger chance for us to get points. And um, you guys know the drill. I'm going to try one stop from mediums onto softs. Um, and we'll just see how it goes from here. Um, we've got nothing to lose. And it's going to be a very interesting strategy. And um, I'm also going to overfuel the car slightly, not too much. Because, uh, yeah, the, the engine still... The engine has doesn't have enough upgrades yet on it to to um, stop with the heavy overheating when sitting in traffic so we're going to take a, a little bit we are going to overfuel the car a little bit uh, just so we have some fuel to play with when we do indeed need to make overtakes and guys finally before we we jam together on the warm-up warm lap let's quickly check the tire strategies there's a few guys outside the top 10 that are running mediums and hards so this is going to be a very 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 interesting race race when it comes to strategy please enjoy it with me
for the Brazilian Grand Prix, the penultimate round of our first season in my team. We head to five red lights. And it's go, go, go for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Bottas and Verstappen on the front row. Verstappen does not get a good launch. It's something that the Red Bull is known for. Around the outside tries Carlos Sainz in the McLaren, followed closely by, by Ricardo and the two Ferraris. In through the center, it's Verstappen squeezes Carlos around the out well to the outside as we head through the last part of the center S. But here comes Sainz. He wants to. He wants that Red Bull. He wants that P2. Come on, here we go. Verstappen defends. Ricardo is, followed, is following them closely by, as well as Leclerc and Vettel. Then behind you, guys, you can see Hamilton is fighting away with the second of Ocon as well as one of the racing points I believe that is Sergio Perez into this next section we now jump back to actually the start of I think Pierre Gasly right ahead of us on the road well uh, like directly ahead of us but he's not on the hard tires and I've got the launch of dreams Holy moly, that was an insane launch. The car just rocketed away off the line. You can see I find myself behind my teammates and one of the Alfa Romeos. So it, I'm basically blocked off here um, by Mr. Aitken and I think it might be Raikkonen right ahead of us. But as we get into the next corner, you guys can see ER deploying overtake mode into the corner. We're gonna go for the dive bomb of dreams. Daniel Rick move here on display. Beautiful move there up the inside of my teammate and the Alfa Romeo. And now we chase after the cars right ahead of us, who is actually that little group of Hamilton, Ocon, and of the racing point of Perez, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see if we can close up to these guys. It's actually Lance Stroll, not Sergio Perez. And Stroll is very, very early on, on the brakes, heading into that right-hander. We go around the outside of the right-hander. We have the inside for the left-hander. And once again, Stroll is fighting this really hard, but around the outside at the, at the basically the, the penultimate corner. Not that it is, but it's the penultimate corner because it's one of the last corners you break for into basically the final corner but now you've got two little kinks which are flat out as you head onto the back straight but not 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 we're talking about now we'll talk about those two corners as the final corners that you break for Bottas leads away from Verstappen P2 Sainz P3 Ricardo in P4 and now we jump all the way onto the the, 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 the middle of no, the end of lap 3 as we start lap 4 DRS is open for Lando Norris the second McLaren driver is trying to make a move here on Sebastian Christian Vettel into the first corner, into the Senais. Norris is around the outside of Vettel, but you've also got Hamilton going side by side with Alex Albon. Beautiful racing here from both, from all four of these drivers. Norris gets Vettel, Hamilton gets Albon, and that is a beautiful sequence of racing there. And behind, even Stroll is making me look like I'm searching for parking. Beautiful move there from the Canadian. Lance Stroll is up into P11, and we are back down to P12, followed by, closely by Raikkonen and my teammate Jack Aitken. We head now onto the end of lap four, guys, and look at Carlos Sainz. The Spaniard is really smelling the gearbox oil of that Red Bull. Into the center is side by side between Verstappen and Sainz. Through this next part, will Sainz get the move done around the outside? No, he does not, but he has the inside as we finish the center S. Through the center S, and that is a beautiful move from Carlos Sainz. But Max Verstappen will have DRS on this little back straight, but there's nothing that Max can do about it, and Sainz is up into P2 for McLaren. That would, that would be a dream result for the, the Papaya orange and blue McLaren team we now jump on board with Lewis Hamilton as he is going after the second Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel around the outside nothing that Vettel can do the move is done even before we get to the center S and now I'm almost sure that Hamilton is going to chase after Lando Norris you got to see Bottas is into the pit lane along with Sainz Verstappen and Ricardo. these are the top four men in the Grand Prix at this stage so this is a fight that we need to watch but Bottas is slowly but surely running away with this Sainz off the softs onto the hearts beautiful stop they're from the McLaren boys. He comes out ahead of, um, Verst of Verstappen. And now you guys can actually see that Ricardo has come out also still right behind them. But now we need to see where does Valtteri Bottas emerge along with the other drivers. You guys see that's actually myself going right around. Well, uh, it looks fantastic as you look at it from that angle as we went through the center S. But Bottas comes out right behind me. Or is this actually Aitken? I think that actually might be. No, it is behind me because it's in between myself and Raikkonen. So Bottas is going to make quick work of me. I can almost assure you guys that that Mercedes was on rails this weekend. I can confirm that. Now into the pit lane comes Leclerc, Norris, and I think Hamilton. Yes, there come the Mercedes boys out of the Mercedes garage. Beautiful stuff here from Ferrari. Yes, it is. Off all of the softs onto the hards. The same for Lando Norris as well as for Lewis Hamilton. A lot of cars coming into the pit lane. And now because of all these um, soft tire runners pitting, we now resume the lead of the 
Brazilian Grand Prix. But we have got a, a humongous, oh, excuse that, a little bit of a burp there. You have got a humongous train right behind us of the race leaders um, actually squabbling away with, with the people who have not yet pitted like myself. Charles Leclerc comes out right behind the Renault of Ricardo. Actually, we were not leading. The leader was Lance Stroll, who stayed out an extra lap. And guys, I think the reason for um, for Lance doing that is he's going to go um, onto a soft medium strategy, which I thought everybody would go for because that is the easier way to go. But look at Bottas, the aggressiveness of the Finn here on the inside of the center as well. We hang it around the outside. We actually, we do. We go, oh, little bit of a, of a, a I wouldn't say a nudge, but an aggressive push. No, not push. I didn't make contact. An aggressive move to towards forcing Bottas towards the outside. Look at Carlos Sainz! He goes right around the outside of Pierre Gasly and he even tries to make a move on the Mercedes of Bottas. I really compromised Bottas coming out of the center. Is So Sainz and Bottas side by side up the hill and what a move from Sainz as they head into the double right-hander. Sainz now actually takes the net race lead, guys. We come into the pit lane at the end of, well, that was that lap 20. Jeez, we took these mediums a far, a far part into the Grand Prix. And this Grand Prix is really flying by a lot quicker than I thought it would. So, we need to stay on our toes. Into the pit lane, you guys can see I'm the only driver into the pit lane, off of the mediums, onto the softs, to finish this race in good fashion. Jeez, it's turbo boosted racing. Beautiful pit stop there, 1.9 seconds. What a stop from the boys there. Well done. We are going to emerge, I think, behind Sergio Perez. Yes, we will, because he's 2.8 seconds up the road, but we rejoin ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Now, guys, here is where the sad news started. P15, you're in P15. They're on old hearts. Raikkonen is behind you. Our gap behind is 15.3 seconds. They're on fresh hearts. 16 laps to go. Okay, not too bad there. But now, guys, like I said, this is where the sad news starts. Okay, because I, for some or other stupid reason, had no pace on the softs. I don't know what it is. I think it might be because we've stopped the development on our car um, from this point on further. But I mean, we had upgrades fitted to the car for this episode. So it baffled my mind, but we just had no pace whatsoever. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even catch Sergio Perez, who was on hards, used hards ahead of me. The car just wasn't jelling with the track and I was in a good rhythm. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was driving slowly. The car just had no pace and I don't know why. And here is where my problems are going to start. Because I've got these two boys coming from behind. The two Alpha Tauris of Pierre Gasly and Daniel Kvyat is coming from behind at blistering speeds because they've also got the softs. But unlike me, the tires are actually working for them and their cars are hooking up. This is Kvyat. Uh, yes, this is Kvyat making a move on my teammate Aitken. And he's now going to go after Raikkonen. You guys see, I just went through the shot there uh, quickly as we went through the center S. But that is Gasly through on Aitken. And he's going to make quick work of um of Raikkonen as well i think that uh, that was gasly if i'm not mistaken this is now kavir no it, this is it's still gasly oh a little bit of a lockup going around the outside of the flying fin kimi Raikkonen. beautiful move there from pierre gasly as he now sets his sights on me now we jump on board with his teammate danny kavir who's making a move on the horse of charles no no, no charles the clear sorry guys my head is in career mode for some other reason who makes the move on the horse of roman grosjean and that is a beautiful Beautiful move. Oh, Grodon keeps his nose in there, but the grip is not going to be there for the harsh driver. He's got DRS though. Oh, it's not Grosjean, it's Magnussen. And into the next corner, K Mac is there's nothing that K Mac can do, and that is Kvyat up another position. And the most sad thing about this entire story is we are not even going to fight for points. Guys, we are not within the points. We're gonna fight for like I think P11, P12, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Here you guys can see that's actually oh boy, that's the Williams getting out of the way of, of all actually blocking Carlos Sainz. He upsets Sainz coming out of the final corner. And here comes Bottas trying to retake the lead from Carlos Sainz. McLaren v Mercedes. Will we see this in 2021? I damn sure hope so. Into the first corner. Bottas gets the move done. And that is Valtteri Bottas back up into the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix and Sainz back down to P2. 
We got to set up. We jump on board with my teammate Jack Aitken, who's actually trying to go for a move on Kimi Raikkonen here. Beautiful move around the outside of Aitken. And guys, what did I say? End of Q1, he's P8. By the end of the race, he's battling for P16, P17. So there's no point in me keeping Mr. Aitken. Even though I like Jack a lot, he is not a, a good thing for the team at this stage. Look at Kvyat. He has caught up to these two. And while they were battling, he went for a very opportunistic move. He's trying to go around the outside of Raikkonen, which which he does beautiful move there from the Russian the, Ru the Russian yes the Russian and now he's gonna go after my teammate Jack Aitken and he's gonna try and chase after him his teammate Gasly and myself but Aitken actually defends very nicely there from Kvyat beautiful defensive work there from Aitken but as we head through this next part of the track here comes Kvyat right behind Aitken Aitken forces him to the inside of the track beautiful sequence of moves here by the two drivers it's the Mabutsu racing versus Alpha Tauri but Alpha Tauri the car it's just, uh, I, I feel the car is quicker this weekend than we are the most definitely. And that is Kvyat. He actually got, didn't get past Aitken. He has to wait till the end of that lap. And here comes Kvyat. Will he make the move on Aitken? I'm sure he will. Into the first corner. Aitken is on the right, on the outside with less grippy tires. And that's a beautiful move from Danny Kvyat. And he is now up into, I don't know, what's that? I think it's P15. Because... Gasly is P14 and I'm P13 as far as I know. But let's run to the top 10. Bottas leading the way from Carlos Sainz, P2. Then in P3, you've got the Renault of Daniel Ricciardo. P4, Max Verstappen, who's not having a very fun race. P5, Charles Leclerc. P6, Lando Norris. P7, Lewis Hamilton. We are surrounding so quickly through the drivers, I can't even get to them. I think that's, uh, that's Alex Alba in P11. Pierre Perez P12 and yes we are in P13 guys we are in P13 battling now with both of the Alpha Tauris for no points no points how sad is that? Look at Gasly going up the inside. Come on, a potential teammate for me in the future. I'm definitely looking at both these drivers. I'm looking at Kvyat and, and Gasly. But now, because we blocked off Gasly, just almost like we did um, Bottas earlier in the race. Here comes Kvyat, like Sainz did on Bottas. Will Kvyat go up the inside? Yes, he does. And that is Kvyat now up in two. P14, trying to steal away P13 from myself, but I am not going to allow it as long as I live. <laughs> we come towards the end of the final lap, guys, and Valtteri Bottas will win the Brazilian Grand Prix in very, very nice fashion. You've got Carlos Sainz in P2 getting a brilliant result for McLaren, as well as Ricardo for Renault in P3. But as you guys can see, we jump on board with myself. It's very close between myself and Gasly, and well, between myself, Gasly and Kvyat. Into the final corner, we take the esports line. We are going to try and keep it. We'll get the power down as much as possible. We're going to blast all the ERS we have down this back straight. I think that we have done enough, but it's a very, very sad P13. And um, honestly, this is a race to forget. Oh my great goodness. Not just victory today then, but the championship as well. What a spectacular season they've had. Congratulations to the whole team. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Valtteri Bottas passes his rival to take over the lead of the driver's championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? It's got to be Valtteri Bottas, a commanding performance that I think had the audience's eyes glued to him for the majority of the race. It's another clear win for Mercedes as they manage to secure the Constructors' title. An incredible performance for the whole team.
And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. How do you feel about this team's performance this season? Appreciate your time. Congratulations Mercedes AMG Patronas Racing for sealing the Constructors Championship in absolutely dominant fashion. Guys, Mercedes are your Constructors Champions for Season 1 of my team, but the championship battle between Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton is literally going to go down to the wire in Abu Dhabi. Nine points separates the two Mercedes boys, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, my bet is with Valtteri Bottas who's got the upper hand heading into Abu Dhabi. But guys, we can't focus on that. If you guys checked, the, checked out the championship, you guys could see that we are basically splitting Red Bull and Ferrari in the Drivers' Championship. We unfortunately do not have... Um, enough points to catch either Charles Leclerc or Sebastian Vettel but guys I am ahead of Max Verstappen and basically the only way that how Max can can get P5 in the Drivers' Championship is if he wins Abu Dhabi and I don't get any points at all so I think that we we have sealed P5 in the in, in the Drivers' Championship as long as we get points in Abu Dhabi so that is what I'm aiming for P10 P9 we're just gonna have fun in Abu Dhabi and round out this dream rookie season like it should be like it should be ended guys look at that we have had one two three four five podiums in our rookie season five one third place with the fastest lap two second places and two wins how do you how do you describe that for a rookie season in Formula One? It is not, it's not, it's not possible to describe that. It's insane. So these, this episode might, might not have been as exciting as you guys are used to. But I mean, guys, we just had no pace. It was a little bit of a reality check for us. But um, we'll see what happens the next episode in Abu Dhabi. We're going to go aggressive and try and get the points to stay ahead of Max Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship. But guys, that has been this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying till the end. Please make sure, if you're not yet subscribed, to hit that subscribe down below. Don't forget to ding that bell to never miss a future episode because next episode, we will end off the season of my team as well as you guys are going to have a few hints of what's coming in season two which i am stoked for guys if you haven't done it yet please drop a like down below on the video it's only going to take you a nifty two seconds and also when you subscribe make sure to ding that bell like i can't put enough emphasis on that ding that bloody bell finally guys please check out the links in the description down below um, to follow me on social media if you want to share this video or my channel with your friends please do so tag me in the post or the story and i will give you a shout out on my social Social media as well as in a future video here on YouTube guys it's been fantastic not the best race in the world but we will survive you can't win them all you can't do great in all of them and like I said this weekend was just a bit of a reality check so much that can happen here heading into season two so many potential new second drivers so much potential for season two in general like I said it's going to be fantastic you guys are amazing thank you for the support with these videos i honestly appreciate it i love you guys and i can't wait to see how this season ends i'll see y'all next time cheers